Okay. So up next is Cadet Pierce, K-E-A-J-C-T. His title of his talk is Portable Audio Frequency Shift Keen Sensors Using a Ham Shield Mini. All right. So I came here to present a portable AFSK motion detector. Really wanted to show off the uh, advantage of this new ham shield board that I found and how this impacts the technology of amateur radio, Kickstarter, and open source technologies. So I'm here for the Digital Communications Conference, which we're all here for. So my agenda, I'm going to go over the introduction and background, the reason why I came up with this project, the project itself, how it performs and how it's engineered, my conclusion and my expansion on the project. And then, since the Army's paying me to be here, go over my future work and immediate goals, what, what West Point's like and what Cadet's life for me. So for the purpose of this project, I wanted to urge support for these crowdfunded open source ham radio projects, which is relatively new. So we're used to those archaic ICOM and Yaesu companies that come out with big software. Well, right now we have startup companies and Kickstarter companies to demonstrate simple solutions to unique problems. So the ham shield uses Python, Python and Arduino code, so it's really simple and easy to use, but it's a simple solution to a creative problem. And I wanted to take an innovative approach to ham radio, to use new solutions that maybe aren't developed yet and learn something new along the way. So what is the ham shield? Well, it's an open source, crowdfunded Arduino and Dotter board. I have Raspberry Pi crossed out there because they list that it's compatible. Uh, it took me several hours to realize that it's not compatible. <laughs> so it's extremely small, light, and low power. If you see it here, it's like size of a gum stick. It uh, goes 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 300 milliwatt transmit. It's also cheap. So $50 for a mini and then $10 for an Arduino Pro Mini, which is the blue board on here as well. Sort its capabilities, so it can transmit and receive on just about every mode, two meters and 70 centimeters. It does all those modes listed there. Uh, I know SSTV is also on there. That doesn't really work. That's another thing with the ham shield developers. So this is just a standard ham shield. There's a LoRa version if you want to do internet communications, uh, TRRS, TNC control, and then there's cross compatibility. So ham shield works, and the same scripts go onto the ham shield mini to go onto the LoRa version, and they're all cross compatible. So what are the drawbacks to this board? Well, it's very buggy and there's a lot of memory limitations. So when you're using an Arduino Mini, you've got about, uh, I think, 1.2 gigabytes of storage. At, or, yeah, you have like 1.2 gigabytes of storage. And so we run into memory problems all the time. So the, uh, the storage, we get it about 70% and then we get a ton of issues. It's hard to code and hard to expand. So if you see on my picture, easiest way I found to code with the Arduino, you get onto the examples, Pick the Hampshire example, and you just pick the example. Don't try and make your own stuff or it won't work. <laughs> but it's really useful with uh, being open source because you can just email a developer and ask them to fix something. And overall, I think it's a fantastic piece of hardware. But why is it relevant? So it's in this new age of developer and consumer review. Uh, if you go to the Enhanced Radio Devices blog, they'll post things just about every week on something new they've discovered. Or I'll tell them that I made something and then I'll see my post on their blog next week. So there's also a debate between the unreliability or the undiscovered of ham radio. On their blog, they say, as we discover more about the chip that we sell to you and you buy and you expect to work, they'll update the document. So they don't even expect their own chips to work, but that's kind of your problem owning the board. <laughs> it's kick-started ham radio. So we have these new startup companies like Flex Radio and then Enhanced Radio Devices. They're no longer archaic, and they come up with dynamic, creative new solutions. And then, so that's my email chain with developers. I said, hi, I'm trying to get the Hampshire Mini to work, and it doesn't. 25 emails later, I said, hi, I'm still here. The Hampshire Mini still doesn't work. And then they reply 25 emails later. So what's the background for my project? So I wanted QRP capability, so low power, because I thought that's what the Hampshire Mini would do best. I wanted robotics and Arduino repeatability, where all I would do is plug something in, not using a TNC controller. Low power Arduino sensors, so something small and light that was repeatable, and then an open source project so I could share it with somebody else. So I chose a PIR sensor up there, and I used a lot of Adafruit scripts, which are all open sourced. So my project itself. So I used an AFSK transmitter with a movement detector. So it uses a PIR sensor, which is 3.3 volts, detects light and change in heat, and then sends an uh, AFSK message over hand radio on the two meter band. So it uses all those parts there, ham shield, Arduino underneath it. I said ugly daughter board. Uh, it looks like kind of a Hamvention shirt there with the red and yellow splats everywhere. 
Then there's a PIR sensor and then an anchor phone charger at the bottom. So it's a small size, power, and open source, even when it's prototyped, because it's on the proto board. So it can still be engineered to be smaller with soldering and 3D printed boards. So how did I develop it? Well, I use the Arduino Pro Mini, because it's light, cheap, and widely used. I use a 3 volt, 3, 8 hertz version for even a smaller power consumption. The Hemsville Mini acted as a daughter board. So I said acted because it was on that weird angle over top of it. Uh, the antenna was the largest part of the build, and that was just used for 2 meter transmit. The PR sensor was low operating voltage and super cheap, probably about $5. So if I broke it, I could just buy a new one. Maker phone charger was safe, effective, and rechargeable because I've tried using lithium ion batteries, and those tend to go up in flames pretty easily. So how does this work detailed? So it runs independent of serial control and user input. All I do is power up my radio, and it does what it's supposed to do. Combines beginner open source code because I'm an electrical engineer, not a computer scientist. So I go on an Adafruit, copy down the PAR sensor code, and stick it in the Hampshield code. And so my coding is copy and pasting. The code's right there, actually. So it just reads if the input pin for the PIR sensor is high, then it sends out its message. And it transmits that predetermined AFSK message to a, motion, to a ground station that can transmit it. So how, did I, so how does it perform? So I used a decoder on my laptop. I used that regular RTL SDR dongle connected to my computer, and then freeware AFSK decoding software. It costs about $70 for a full homebrew, so that includes the uh, Hampshield Mini, the Arduino Pro Mini, and then the PIR sensor. And it covers about five meters for a range detector. Uh, because the power output is a tiny bit lower than 3.3 volts, sometimes there's some false positives. The range is a question of big debate with this 300 milliwatts, so we don't expect a whole lot of ionospheric propagation in two meters. However, with my APRS transmitter with a ham shield, uh, this is about six miles across the Hudson River, although I haven't, sometimes I've struggled to get it 100 meters. So the range is much up to debate, whatever the atmosphere, I guess, is feeling that day. And then over there, that's an output, kind of, of the ham shield. And that's the example that they gave, which is still messed up on this AX25 because it's all jumbled up right there, and there's no text there, and that's half text. But it's a finished product, right? So what do you learn from the uh, prototyping the board? So it's crowdsourced and open-sourced ham radio project. So it's a new series of rapid prototyping, where maybe the developer didn't come up with the answer, but a consumer did. So now the developer and consumer work together to produce these answers. It's a bizarre versus cathedral approach from Eric Raymond. So rather than an archaic solution coming from the cathedral to the users, Maybe the developers come up with it, and consumers input something like a messy bazaar there. And then with the cheap price and uh, open source projects, it's disposable. So even in a motion detector setting, if you're in a contested environment, you stick it somewhere, you don't really care what happens to it because it's $70. So what's next for this? So I think because of its low power, because of its simple repeated message, I like to take it on APRS. So the <laughs> digi feeding allows for that weak signal communication. Tel telemetry data we can also add because we have still more pins on the ham shield. You can use APRS for more than vehicle tracking because we all know APRS is not a vehicle tracking system. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So to expand the build itself, we still have those Arduino pins. So if we want to add maybe a range ultrasonic sensor, we have more pins for that. If we want a servo control, if we want to control the door opening or closing maybe, we can still do that with the, with the uh, extra pins on the Arduino. We can engineer it still for a smaller form factor and then uh, passive control. So maybe it'll only turn on when motion's detected to transmit and then turn back off. So we can save power even more that way. I have a WordPress blog where I update my projects on that. So I can take a break from that project, go on to more who I am and what West Point does with Amateur Radio. So I'm a hand since March 2018, president of W2KGY, Cadet Amateur Radio Club. I was at Hamside 2019, except those talks were more in the ionosphere. We're down here now. My ham interests are QRP, antenna theory, and then direction finding. So the, over this picture was uh, our antenna install with Don K4ZA, probably scratching my head at whatever he was doing. And then that's Tim K3LR, who lives near where I live in Eatland. So my current research, I am using APRS for vehicle tracking. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> But it's bike tracking this time. So it uses a ham shield mini and a serial control with a Raspberry Pi Zero. It uses yet another APRS client. Uh, I think that's made by KA2DDO. And I expect to complete it for IEEE SoutheastCon. 
So there's a picture of me actually with that in there, mounted on my back pocket of my bike. And then this was me walking from the ham club room over to my room, all over here in solitude. So I say uh, six miles was impressive, but I think that 400 meters is also really impressive. They call West Point the rock-bound Highland home. Whenever I talk about radio, it's the granite and lead every 10 feet home because you can't propagate anything. <laughs> and then I'm also working on a VHF DF antenna performance paper, and that's based on the Bible of T hunting, which is transmitter hunting, radio direction finding simplified. So what does W2KGY do? Well, to quote Ward Silver, we're a science, skill, and service. So we stress the importance of the HF for our future officers, and that's why we're an emergency traffic station and a Mars station. So we'll operate, uh, during active drills, we'll operate as a traffic station, and then we'll show generals and all that our, our Mars capabilities. We compete in contests, so ARRL School Club Roundup, Noble Skywave is a military contest that we do. And then each year we launch an APRS weather balloon. We're going to Hamvention this year. We take trips to W1AW, which is just an hour away. So there's our antenna install, and then that's an old, we call our yearbook the Howitzer. It's an old Howitzer picture. And uh, I think that's me, that's my roommate, and that's my friend who I forced to come. I think now we have probably eight people in the club, and it's not just me. This is a lot for leaving. Here's just more pictures of us. If you'll see, Case Western is somewhere on that list, just not as good as us at Ritty in February. Yeah, but the I guess so. So the contest itself was February, and then they popped up in March somehow. So if we're going by March, then, or we're going by February, then I'd say we got second place, but if we're going by that, we got third place. I don't ever tell anybody it was ten, second or third place out of nine, I just say second place or third place. Uh, we do a, a, a SSTV that's on the roof of Bartlett Hall at 9 p.m. with a tape measure antenna because I wasn't allowed to leap that weekend. And then that's our weather balloon, and then that's the SSTV award. So the Army is paying me to be here. I'll just read off the admission slides. Uh, cadet life's mixture of athletic, academic, military duties. So for me, being on triathlon and uh, being an electrical engineering major, I usually wake up at 5.15 and go to bed at 2300. Yeah. So I'm also an electrical, electrical engineering major. Uh, I specialize in telecommunications. Obviously, that's why I'm here. So I like it there that there's limitless resources, there's a lot of data labs, and a lot of uh, digital communications labs. There's available professors for me to come. And then triathlon team gives me physical rigor, rewarding opportunities, an opportunity to have a bike to put my APRS transmitter in. <laughs> yeah. And to conclude, I'd just like to thank uh, Dr. Kate Duncan, Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton, who are both here to support me in my talk, uh, the Army Cyber Institute, which paid for this and paid for all my equipment, and then Usman Personnel have helped me there, and then Morgan Redfield and Casey Halverson, who are developers of the Ham Shield, and they've helped me with their uh, 30 long email chain on how to get the board to work. Yeah, and that's all that I have. Great. Now there's, ask this young cadet questions. Come on, questions. All right. Uh, uh, very impressive. Uh, that PIR sensor, does it work in the day and dark? Yes. Okay, you said it, it's light and IR? It's, it's, so it's usually a heat signature. Uh, since they have it in doors, you can breach doors with that with a vape pen. So if you, you're an aerosol can, either of those can trigger a PIR sensor. Okay. Questions? I guess that's it, Cadet. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.